Let's make a French 75. This is a classic gin meets champagne cocktail. It was invented in 1915 uh, at the New York bar in Paris, and it's called a French 75, supposedly because the combination of gin and champagne hits you as hard as a French artillery shell from a 75 millimeter artillery cannon or machine gun. I don't know. I'm not a military historian. Anyway, let's make one. Lemon juice is a key ingredient in a French 75. You always want to use fresh lemon juice. This one is super fresh because I actually grew it in a tree on a tree in my backyard. But if you have to buy yours at the grocery store, that's okay too. So first, we're actually going to use a channel peeler and we're gonna peel some of the peel of the lemon because we're gonna use that as a garnish in our drink. So you just take the channel peeler and curl, you can see the zest escaping from this possibly. You curl a long piece of peel all the way around. And then what I like to do is wrap the peel around a chopstick and set it aside so that it stays extra curly. I usually also just put something on top of it to hold it down. So that's a little tip for you. Then you wanna cut your lemon in half through the fat part, just like that. For juicing, I prefer to use something like this. I think I got this at Target. It's just a three piece item. The juice goes in there. You rub the citrus on here and it has an extra piece if you wanna do grapefruit, it's bigger. But I usually use this one because I'm usually doing lemons and limes. And then you just push down on the citrus and turn it. This is called a citrus reamer and it will extract much more juice than something like a handheld press or hand squeezing the lemon. Both of which are fine if those are your only options. Um, but I just prefer this method also because it has this handy receptacle to catch the juice and I don't have to worry about where it's gonna end up. I'm gonna juice this whole lemon. You only need half an ounce of lemon juice for each French 75. One lemon will probably give you enough juice to make two. It really depends on your lemon. Um, some lemons are juicier than others. And I will also say that room temperature citrus tends to juice more easily than refrigerated citrus. Something about being cold, I don't know, I think it tightens up the fibers and it makes it harder to extract the juice. So if you remember, take your lemons or your citrus out of the refrigerator a couple of hours before you want to use them. So we've got our juice here. We're gonna set that aside. Now we're gonna get a cocktail shaker. When you're making cocktails with sparkling wine, the first part of it usually happens inside a shaker. Never ever put your sparkling ingredient in your shaker. You do not wanna shake the bubbly ingredients. So we're gonna just shake the gin, the simple syrup, and the lemon juice, put those in a glass, and then we're gonna to top it with the sparkling wine when we are done. So first, we're gonna start with gin. I'm just using Tanqueray, it's one of my favorite London dry gins. Um, this is one of my favorite brands. Got our jigger here. The big part measures one ounce. So we're just gonna pour that right into the shaker. Now, a French 75 traditionally calls for regular simple syrup, but I have a homemade cranberry orange simple syrup that has some winter spices in it. So I'm gonna use that. You can see it's got this pale orange color to it. It's just in an old syrup bottle, nothing fancy. Uh, and I'm gonna use a different jigger because we need three quarters of an ounce of this and this jigger only does half and one. So I've got a whole separate jigger for the three quarters ounce of syrup. And then we're gonna use half an ounce of our lemon juice and I just pour it right from this little container, which is why I like this contraption so much. So that goes in there. Now we're gonna add some ice and we're gonna shake it. I'm just using freezer ice for this. Nothing fancy, but I am using whole cubes. This is the biggest cube that my freezer makes. Don't use the little pieces 
is because those are gonna break up too fast and they're gonna dilute, you dilute your cocktail too fast. So always use the biggest pieces that you can find in your freezer. And you wanna fill your shaker about three quarters of the way up with ice. We're gonna put our cap on and we're gonna shake. I shake for like 10 to 12 seconds because there's not gonna be any ice in this cocktail. So I wanna make sure this gets nice and cold. I am gonna use a champagne flute. You can use a regular wine glass. You can use a martini glass. You could even put this in a rocks glass if you want to. Um, so we're just gonna strain that directly into our glass. And then we're gonna top with our sparkling wine. I'm not using champagne, I'm using California sparkling wine. Any bubbly element will do. Now we add our sparkling wine. I am using a sparkling Blanc de Noir from California where I live. Blanc de Noir means it is made only from red grapes. So Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier. Usually there's no Chardonnay in here, no white grapes. So I already had this bottle open. Uh, that's another pro tip. <laughs> French 75s are a great way to use up you know, maybe a little bit of champagne you had left over from the night before. Jazz it up a little bit on night two. So we're just gonna tilt our glass a little bit. That prevents the bubbles from overflowing. Top with sparkling wine. And then we're gonna come back over here where we left our little spiral. And we're gonna place that gently in the glass. Et voila, the French 75. Now, if this is too much for you and you're like, no, just no, I don't wanna do all that. I don't wanna make simple syrup. I want the easiest possible champagne cocktail there is. <laughs> I got you for that one too. So take your glass, take a sugar cube. We keep a jar of these. These are sugar in the raw, so they're brown. Any sugar cube will do. Put that in the bottom of your glass. Take your Angostura bitters. This is not the bottle they come in. I decant mine into this pretty container. So you're just gonna take your Angostura bitters and soak that sugar cube with them. Takes a few shakes. That's gonna help dissolve the sugar cube. It's also gonna help give the cocktail a little bit of extra flavor. So when that's nice and soaked, tilt your glass and pour in your sparkling wine. And that, my friends, is what we call a champagne cocktail. Couldn't be easier. Bitter soaked sugar cube, champagne on top, and you are done. So I hope you enjoy these two festive cocktails. They're both pretty easy, although I will grant you the French 75 is more complicated, but it's still fairly easy as far as cocktails go. If you have any questions, you can always email me either at hello at mixologymagic.us or you can DM me on Instagram. You can find me either at Risa James Photography or at mixologymagic.course. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Cheers.